Hi, welcome to another exciting Maths DVD tutorial. This is the first in a series of three tutorials under the section titled Exponents, Thirds and Logs. Today we will be covering the basics of exponents and third form notation. I need you to be familiar with your grade 10 work in order to master this section. You do need to be able to master this section in order to progress on to the next two tutorials titled Logs and Advanced Exponents. We will begin by looking at a few basic definitions that are pertinent to exponents. Exponent. Exponent is the number indicating the amount of times a base is multiplied by itself. For example, x squared is equals to x times x. x cubed or x to the power 3 is equals to x times x times x. x to the power n is equals to x times itself n amount of times. Prime number. Now a prime number is a number that only one and itself can go into. Examples of prime numbers are 1, 3, 5, 7, 11, and I forgot 2 as well. <laughs> now, 2 is the only even prime number. Every other even number after that has a factor of 2, which means that it cannot be a prime number. That brings us on to our next definition, third form. When we take a number and we write it in third form, we're writing it in its simplest prime number form. Let's use the example of 4. 4 is equal to 2 times 2. 2 is a prime number. So 4 is equal to 2 squared. 2 squared is the simplest prime form of 2. Another example would be 9. 9 is equal to 3 squared. Now, let us start by looking at a few complex numbers and breaking them into prime numbers. Let's start with the number 21. 21 is equal to 7 times 3. Both 7 and 3 are prime numbers that are factors of 21. That was pretty easy. Now think about this one, the number 248. Not an easy one, is it? The first number we're looking at is 248. Now I know that 248 is equal to 2 to the power 3 times by 31. How did we get to that and what are we doing? We're taking this number and we're breaking it down into its simplest prime numbers. Notice that 2 is a prime number as well as 31. Let us see how we do that. We do that using a thing called the ladder method. And I want you to become familiar with this. I also want you to be able to do most of these mentally by the time you're done with this tutorial. Let us start with 248. We, it's going to look very much like a ladder, hence the name ladder method. We start off by looking at the smallest prime number that goes into 248 and that would be 2. 2 into 248 goes 124 times. Smallest prime number into 124 is also 2 and that goes 62 times. Smallest prime number into 62 is again 2 and that goes 31 times. Smallest prime number into 31 is 31. 31 is itself a prime number. Hence the smallest prime number into it is 31. 31 into 31 goes 1 times and we stop when we reach that. That means that 248 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 31 or 2 to the power 3 multiplied by 31. Using the ladder method, I want you to break down the following numbers into their simplest prime form. 
96, 121, 798, 81, and 1024. Press pause on your DVD player and when you return we'll go through these together. Now let us take a look at those numbers. The first one I told you to do was 96. Smallest prime number into 96 is 2. 2 goes into 96 48 times. Smallest into 48 is 2 and that goes 24 times. Smallest into 24 is 2 and that goes 12 times. Smallest prime number into 12 is 2 and that goes 6 times. Smallest prime number into 6 is again 2 and that goes 3 times. Smallest prime number into 3 is 3 itself and that goes 1 times. That means that 96 is equal to 2 to the power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 multiplied by 3 to the power 1 or just 3. The next one I gave you to do was the number 121. This is an interesting one, this is an easy one. Smallest prime number, smallest prime number into 121 is 11 and that goes 11 times. Smallest prime number into 11 is itself and that goes one time. That means that 121 is equal to 11 squared and you can check that on your calculator. The next one we're going to go through is the number 798. When I break 798 down into its prime numbers, the first prime number that goes into 798 is 2 and that goes 399 times. Smallest prime number into 399 is 3 and that goes 133 times. Smallest prime number into 133 is 7 and that goes in 19 times and the smallest prime number into 19 is itself and that goes 1 times. That means that 798 is equal to 2 times 3 times 7 times 19. The next one I gave you to do was the number 81. 81, the first prime number into 81 is 3. 3 goes into 81 27 times. The smallest prime number into 27 is 3. 3 goes into 27 9 times. Smallest prime number into 9 again is 3 and 3 goes in there 3 times and the smallest prime number into 3 is itself and that's 1 time. That means that 81 is equal to 3 to the power 1, 2, 3, 4. Now the next number that I gave you to do, I'm not going to do it using the ladder method. You can use the ladder method for it and I want you to see that you get to an answer of 2 to the power 10. Now before we move into the laws that govern exponents, we are going to take a quick glance at another concept called the, the root of. Now the root of is denoted by this sign over here. Now often when you see this sign, it means that we are looking for the square root of. It's as if there's a 2 in front of it. Let's look at that carefully. Square root of 4 is equals to 2 and the reason for that is 2 squared is equals to 4. So let's look at another one. Let's look at the cube root of 8. Notice that there's a 3, there's a small 3 in front of the root sign. This means cube root of 8. Cube root of 8 is equals to 
2. And the reason for that is 2 cubed is equals to 8. So, remember in the previous example I had 1024 is equals to 2 to the power 10. That means that the 10th root of 1024 is equals to 2. And 3 to the power 4 was equals to 81. That means that the 4th root of 81 is equals to 3. Now, let's look at how we derive one of the exponential laws. If we have a squared, we know that that's equals to a times a. a to the power 3 is equals to a times a times a. Alright, so what if we have a to the power 2 or a squared times by a cubed? That's going to give us a times a times a times a times a, which is the same as a to the power 5. Hence, a to the power m times a to the power n is going to equal a to the power m plus n. Now this technique that I'm using can be used to all of the other laws or rather can be used in order to derive all of the other laws which we will now cover. And that brings us on to the exponential laws. The exponential laws as we have already seen, the first one states x to the power m multiplied by x to the power n will equal x to the power m plus n. What I'm going to be doing on the right hand side is I'm going to give it, be giving you an illustration of how it works. Everything that I am writing down, please copy it down in the space that I've left for you in the workbook. This will, let's say we have x to the power 2 multiplied by x to, oops, multiplied by x to the power 3, that will equal x to the power 5. 2 plus 3 is 5. The second law that we are going to be looking at is very closely related to this law over here which says that x to the power m divided by x to the power n will equal x to the power m minus n. An example of this one, x to the power 6 divided by x to the power 4 will equal x to the power 2. 6 minus 4 is 2. The third law, x to the power m all to the power n will equal x to the power m n. An example, x to the power 5 all to the power 4 will equal x to the power 20. 5 times 4 is 20. Please don't confuse this law with that one. That law is when your bases are multiplied by each other, you add the exponents. This is a completely different law. This is when you have one base to an exponent to a bigger exponent or to another exponent. Then you multiply it. That one you add, this one you multiply. Big, big difference. Don't confuse it. The fourth law says x to the power n over m is equal to the mth root of x to the power n. The first example of that I'm going to use is let's say we have x to the square root of x. Right? Let's work with square root of x. Now remember, square root of something, if there's no number there, we assume that it's a 2, which means that this is going to become x to the power 1 over 2. x to the power a half is the same as square root of x. Because there's a, there's a 2 there which is related to that, and there's a 1 there which is that one over there. That means that x to the power 4 
and the cube root of that will equal x to the power 4 divided by 3. That 4 divided by 3 fraction is the exponent, x is the base. The fifth law we're going to be looking at Here. The first law we're going to be looking at is a common law. x to the power 0 is equal to 1. Now remember that anything to the power 0 is always equal to 1. Let us look at an example of how that happens, or rather how that comes about. We know that anything, let's say we have a over a, we know that that's going to equal 1. a divided by a is 1, right? So, what if I have x to the power 6 over x to the power 6? That should equal 1, right? But x to the power 6 divided by x to the power 6 is the same as, using law 2, is the same as x to the power 6 minus 6, which is equal to x to the power 0, which is the same as 1. The sixth law we're going to be looking at, or rule, says x to the power minus m is equal to 1 over x to the power m. This law here is extremely useful when we are working with complicated fraction type questions that involve exponents. You can take the denominator and move it into the numerator simply by changing the exponent. Let me give you an example of that. Let's say you have 4x squared times y to the power 3 divided by z to the power 2 and you want to bring z to the top that will become 4x squared y cubed multiplied by z to the power negative 2. And that's all over 1 because you've taken that z to the top. Or if you've got that, you can go, you can go from that to that by using that law. The seventh law, also called the distributive law, is a very easy one x times y to the power m is going to equal x to the power m multiplied by y to the power m. Just a quick note on this law here. Let's say for example you've got x to the power 2 multiplied by y to the power 3 all to the power 4. That's going to equal x to the power 4 times 2 which is 8 multiplied by y to the power 4 times 3, 12. We are going to do a quick recap of the laws. Make sure that you've copied it down correctly. I then want you to use the laws and have a go at the exercise that pops up on screen. Press pause on the DVD player and when you return we'll go through it together. Welcome back. The first few that I gave you to do was simplify. I wanted you to break down the expression into its simplest form. The first one read 8 to the power 4 multiplied by 16 to the power 3. Now the first thing I want you to do in any example like this is I want you to break it down into its prime numbers. Usually that is the most helpful. Especially in the case like this, notice both of these are going to be broken down into the same prime base. 8 is the same as 2 to the power 3. It's still to the power 4. Multiplied by 2 to the power 4, which is 16, all to the power 3. 
that's going to give me using the distributive law that's going to give me 2 to the power 12 multiplied by 2 to the power 12 4 3 times 4 is 12 4 times 3 is 12 which is going to equal 2 to the power 24 if you want to you can work that out I'm not worried that you work that out if your answer is left in this form that's fine the second one I gave you to do red 11 x to the power 3 multiplied by y to the power negative 4 divided by 121 x squared 11 is in its simplest form I'm going to leave it as is x to the power 3 the y to the negative 4 I'm going to take that to the bottom 121 is going to become 11 squared x squared multiplied by y to the power positive 4 now this is 11 to the power 1 and at the bottom we or rather in the denominator we've got 11 to the power 2 so we can say 11 to the power 2 minus 1 which is 11 to the power 1 x to the power 3 let's leave that at the, at the top x to the power 3 divided by x squared is 3 minus 2 which is x to the power 1 over y to the power 4 and that's our answer x let me just write that clearer x over 11 y to the 4 right the next one that I gave you to do red 5 to the power 6 all to the power 1 over 18 this will equal 5 to the power 6 multiplied by 1 over 18 is 5 to the power 6 over 18 we can simplify that fraction that will become 5 to the power 6 into itself once 6 into 18 3 times which is equal to the cube root of 5 and again you can leave it in that form by the way this is called simplest third form the fourth one red x y to the power 2 divided by x squared y using the distributive law I can put that in that's going to become x squared y squared over x squared multiplied by y x squared over x squared is 1 or x to the power 0 y to the 2 at the the fourth one that I gave you to do read xy squared over x squared y this is going to become x squared y squared divided by x squared y x squared at the top and the x squared at the bottom cancel they can cancel because there's a multiply between the x and the y if there was a plus or a minus we cannot cancel it but because in this case it's multiplication those two can cancel y squared divided by y is equal to y to the power 1 over 1 or just y the next one we're going to be looking at number 5 
The next one we're going to be looking at number 5 says 2 to the power 8 divided by 4 times 2 to the power 6. I'm going to start off by leaving this 2 to the power 8 on the top. In the denominator I'm going to turn that 4 into 2 to the power 2 multiplied by 2 to the power 6, 6 stays as is. This then becomes 2 to the power 8 on the top divided by 2 to the power 2 multiplied by 2 to the power 6 will equal 2 to the power 2 plus 6 which is 8 which equals 1 because that becomes 2 to the 8 over 2 to the 8 is 1 8 minus 8 is 0 2 to the power 0 is 1 whichever way you want to look at it as long as you come to an answer of 1 that's fine let us look at the next few the next ones that I gave you to do were all solved for x the solving for x ones the first one read 2 squared multiplied by x is equal to 2 to the power 2 or 2 squared. In this case here what I'm going to do is I'm going to get x on its own on that side which means that I've got to divide my left hand side by 2 to the power 2 to get rid of that. What I do to one side I do to the other side. That means that x is equal to 2 to the power 2 divided by 2 to the power 2 is 1 and that's my answer. The second solve for x question we had read 4 to the power, oh, sorry, 4 times x cubed is equal to 32. I'm going to start by turning that 4 into 2 squared times by x cubed is equal to 32. I'm going to turn that into 2 to the power 5. That means that x cubed is equal to 2 to the 5 divided by 2 to the 2. I'm going to carry on over there. 2 to the 5 divided by 2 to the 2 will be 2 to the 5 minus 2 which is 2 to the 3. That means that x to the 3 is equal to 2 to the power 3. Because the exponents are the same it means that the bases are the same which means that x is equal to 2. The third one the third one that we had to do read square root of 6 squared plus 3 squared is equal to the x root of 45. Now warning just because that's squared and we're looking for the square root of it doesn't mean that it immediately cancels because of this plus sign. I'm going to leave the square root there. 6 squared is 36 plus 3 squared is 9 is equal to the x root of 45. 36 plus 9 is 45. So we are looking for the square root of 45 being equal to the x root of 45. This means that 45 to the power a half is equal to 45 to the power 1 over x. That again bases are the same that means that the exponents are the same that means that a half is equal to 1 over x that means that x is equal to 2. All right. Let us have a look at number 4. Number 4 read three to the power zero plus three to the power x is equal to twenty eight. This one here I'm going to start it off a little bit differently. 
3 to the power 0 isn't that equal to 1 plus 3 to the power x is equal to 28. I'm not going to simplify that just yet. That means that 3 to the power x is equal to 28 minus 1. Take the 1 over. That means that 3 to the power x is equal to 27. Now simplify it. 3 to the power x is equal to 3 to the power 3. 27 is the same as 3 to the power 3. Bases are the same. That means that the exponents are the same. That means that x is equal to 3. Now please note that in all of the worked examples I am going through a lot of steps. Most of you should be able to do this in probably one, two, three steps. Let us look at the last one, number 5. Number 5 read, x to the power 4 over 7 is equal to 5 to the power 3. Now this is an interesting one. I've got x to the power 4 over 7 and I want to turn it into x to the power 1. What do I have to do to that fraction exponent? Think about this. What if I multiplied that exponent by 7 over 4? Wouldn't that become 1? So what if I put it to the power 7 over 4? because the 7's would cancel and the 4's would cancel to give me x to the power 1. What I do to one side, I do to the other side. So I made that to the power 7 over 4, I'm going to make the other side to the power 7 over 4. That will equal 5 to the power 3 over 1 multiplied by 7 over 4, which is equal to 21 over 4 x is equal to 5 to the power 21 over 4 or x is equal to the fourth root of 5 to the power 21 and I don't expect you to do that if you leave your answer like this or like this it is correct don't bother to go any further and that brings us to the end of this first tutorial under the section exponents logs and thirds in your workbook, I have left an exercise for you to do. I strongly recommend that you go through the entire exercise before proceeding on to tutorial 2, which deals with logarithms.